Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today, I actually didn't expect this book to come out so soon because I don't really pay attention. But this is Thor number 28. And uh, it's uh, the conclusion, actually. I, I didn't know this. Like I said, I wasn't really following anything Thor was going through or Donny Cates' run on there. I haven't been following Venom and what's going on there. So I think this, although I think someone, maybe Eddie's mullet, I asked him. He was like telling me about the new Venom run. And he was like, hey, can I spoil something for you? And I'm like, sure. And he did. And I so I kind of forgot, though, because I'm like, eh, doesn't sound cool. And when things don't sound cool, they don't stick in my head. Uh, but uh, but then it happened in this book. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, that, I think that was the thing Eddie was trying to tell me. Uh, so Eddie's mullet, thank you. Because uh, because uh, when I read this, I was like, it was still a surprise. But I was still then I was like, oh, wait, no, Eddie told me that. And yeah, I don't like it <laughs> like at all. Um, so there will be some spoilers in this. Uh, I will try to keep it mild. But I think if you're reading the current Venom book, the thing I say in here won't be a spoiler to you, but it, it was a little bit on some level to me. And then it then I realized I knew it already. Um, but in case you don't want that, I would say go away now and then come back after you've uh, read this issue or if you've you know read the current Venom run, if you want to wait till then and check it out yourself. Because I think the first trade is out. I own it digitally on Comixology. It was like $8.99. So I bought it and I will read it coming up. But I kind of want to have maybe Eddie's mullet on with me and we might talk about the first Venom trade together and the first Carnage trade together and maybe do like a two-part two-parter uh, because I'm kind of nervous to talk about them by myself because I feel like I'm going to be very negative um, but um, but Eddie said yeah we'll probably be negative on the Venom one he goes but I think you'll like the Carnage book so I'm excited to read the Carnage book now uh, but yeah we'll catch up because we want to get all this stuff caught up before Dark Web but before I dive into Thor 28 spoilers ahead for sure um, and I'm also going to kind of spoil how the last issue ended because I didn't in that episode um, but I will in this one so First off, uh, Darkoth, the demon, has created a hammer of his own made of a unique metal that I guess his body produces. The symbiote that's on him is one of Bedlam's children. I don't know who Bedlam is yet. I think he's one of the villains in the new Venom book. Uh, I'm going to assume that. Um, but he has these children that are symbiotes, and it bonded with Darkoth, the demon, and found that it, his body creates some kind of metal that is harmful to Odin even and to Thor um, and also Venom, Eddie Brock. So uh, he, he uses that metal to create his own hammer. The symbiote creates uh, Darkoth's hammer um, using that metal and using the power of Hellfire. Uh, so now he's equipped with this and he's battling Sif and Loki and Thor and the, the Warriors 3 who are there as well and there's a big battle in Zeus. That's pretty much while that's happening though, we also cut to Donald Blake, who is down in the pits of the, the under realm or whatever of, of Asgard. And he's getting the venom dripped on his eyes from the serpent that's down there. Uh, and that's where Loki keeps him. So the whole battle is pretty much that's what this is. The first half of this is just a battle where Thor and Venom and the team aren't really doing that well, which is funny because there's Loki's right there and he's contributing, but he's not contributing. And I'm kind of like, uh, I thought he was on his brother's side and their father, Odin, his spirit is inside the hammer. So something happens to that and there's some bleeding coming from the hammer and that pisses Thor off. So he wants to, you know, definitely put Darkoth down for good. So this is where I feel like Donny Cates comes in because Donny Cates is the, he co-plotted this, I guess, with Al Ewing. But he let Al Ewing write the script, or they worked that out to where Al Ewing wrote the script, which you can tell because the dialogue is not, you know, goofy the whole time, <laughs> uh, in my opinion. Sorry, Donnie. Um, but uh, but the, uh, the concepts are very Donnie, because like Donnie did with Thor in his last story, where it was like a gamma Thor, so Thor became a Hulk. Now we have Thor bonding with the symbiote of Eddie's. Um, although Eddie, there's no body, like, I guess he's the king in black, so he's just liquid now, and he just goes and bonds to Thor, and he creates Thornum, is what Loki calls him. Such a Donny Cates idea. Donny Cates is, he's like the king of stacking powers. He's just like, how do I make someone cooler? I know, I'll stack their powers. So this feels like a very Donny, if, if Al Ewing came up with this, let me know, because I'll be surprised, for sure. Um, but this feels like a Donny Cates idea. Uh, so anyway, you have you know, Thor 
is the all father now and he's bonded to the king in black the king of all symbiotes so it's like two gods merged as one and they have a bleeding hammer of odin and so they make short work of dark hoth uh they beat him up pretty good um loki finally creates a dragon and uses the fire to like hurt the symbiote and weaken it and then you know thornum is like beating him with a symbiote mjolnir with leaky odin blood <laughs> or whatever um so they but they make short work of them and then that's where the twist comes in and so spoilers like i said uh for this um it's actually it, it is eddie brock he's he says i'm eddie and he and that's i guess that's where the line from the last issue comes from where he said i'm going old school and it's like venom flying with the wings coming out of him like donny kate's created i'm like it ain't that old that happened a couple years ago well now it makes sense because apparently one of the other villains in the new uh venom book is a character named meridius so eddie brock trans or the symbiote or the guy that looks like eddie brock symbiote modern day transforms into meridius and says i didn't lie to you i am eddie brock so that was the thing i was like oh right meridius is eddie brock that's what eddie's mullet told me and i it sounded so dumb that i it went right out of my head so when it happened here i was like oh interesting and i'm like oh wait no yeah i did know this and no it's not that interesting because the more i thought about the idea i'm like oh this is stupid so yeah so how do you elevate eddie brock taking down no well now he's got to take down an even stronger godlike eddie brock you know it's uh god i i'm so sick of uh, <laughs> modern comics sometimes uh, although the moon knight book that's jed mckay's doing right now amazing so uh you'll definitely get more reviews of that from me soon because i'm loving the living hell out of that book that book is so fun i actually just picked up the second trade so that'll be the next uh discussion video i do for moon knight will be on that trade paperback because i love the first volume but i like this volume a lot too and i like the current issue that i read called chinatown is very good as well um but this like i just can't, can't i have a feeling i'm just not gonna like this new venom run at all uh, so i guess eddie brock is the villain and his name is meridius now and he's been through time and all this stuff okay uh and then thor says yeah but i'm the all father and i have odin's power and i have my eye power and, and i'm i'm the best and so he he defeats meridius well not really meridius meridius picks up the hammer and he's like i can use this weapon and absorb it and it'll make me more powerful um you know i'm just trying to change the future everything that's happened here in the past is set in stone but tomorrow is unwritten now that i'm here so i'm trying to change something that happens and he's like thor wouldn't you do that too like, if you knew your father was going to die and if you knew all this stuff was going to happen to you wouldn't you have you gone back and changed it and he's like well it depends what does changing things do to the ones i love and then meridius is like you know i almost liked you we were almost friends until you said that um so i'm guessing meridius is selfish eddie and hasn't learned any lessons and has all this power and he thinks he's going to change things but it's really just going to screw over everybody and only benefit him and although that is kind of in keeping with eddie on some level i feel like the one thing i like that donnie did was he brought real responsibility to eddie with dylan and i figured that would give us new story elements from eddie moving forward and apparently al ewing has gone back a step in a way uh but i don't know i mean maybe it's interesting maybe some of you guys like it so if you do let me know down below but i just kind of was like eh whatever but thor destroys that hammer so meridius can't have it and then meridius leaves and the hammer falls to the ground turns into liquid and then pours into the dirt and thor's like wait a minute i don't sense it anymore and they're like oh yeah but you know it's a big planet maybe you know and he's like no i'm the all father now i can see all of asgard and this realm i know if it's here and it's not here but that's weird it only went into the ground you know how do i not see it and loki's like no reason because obviously under where they're standing deep down under is where he has donald blake captive and he's dripping the the serpent venom on his eyes every day which is so awesome actually i like that idea a lot because uh, it's such a loki like you know torturing thing uh, it's so it's so perfect for loki uh, to come up with um so anyway so the the liquid from the hammer that and now that it's so it's got the liquid metal in it and the symbiote and the dark hoth blood all mixed together and it seeps into the ground and then it finds its way um into the secret sanctum that loki has with uh donald blake and it drips onto donald blake's eyes and turns him into like a new creature a, a serpent symbiote thing and so i guess we're gonna get 
now Donald Blake is has a symbiote <laughs> or whatever. So another Donny Cates idea probably. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I I I it's fine. I mean this I, I I wasn't like you know I don't get pissed off when I read these things if I don't like them. Um, it's not like some YouTubers out there who like make this big dramatic thing like oh they're trying to squeeze this message into my book or they're trying it's like eh, it's, it's not that serious to me like I like the escape I like the stories and if I'm having fun I, I really don't care really about much else like I mean I'm an editor at heart and I like to dissect things but if something's just good and fun I kind of turn that side of my brain off and just kind of go along for the ride and that's where a lot of my love for the Moon Knight series currently right now is because I was like man following the show is this gonna be good this is my first time really diving into Moon Knight am I gonna like it and I'm really happy that I did. Same with Daredevil. Like I've read some great Daredevil runs over the years, but after the show, I loved the show so much that I was like, man, am I going to like Chip Zdarsky's run? And I started into it and I was like, yeah, I have some criticisms for sure, but overall I loved it. Same with Moon Knight. I have a few little criticisms, but overall I love what Jed McKay is doing with this character with the Midnight Mission. So there are books out there that, you know, you'll find that you'll love, you know, like I, I when people say, oh, comics are dying and stuff, I'm like, well, financially and sales wise, yeah, they are kind of, but there's still stuff out there that I think is, there's something for everybody. Moon Knight's for me, Thor and, you know, Donny Cates and Al Ewing's stuff, not so much for me, but it was fun to kind of revisit and kind of go back into something that Donny had a hand in. And I will say overall, it, I mean, it's not a bad story. It, I was surprised it was just two issues. But it has a lot of the staples of like, oh, let's, you know, let's put Gamma in Thor and let's put a symbiote on Thor. And it's kind of like, yeah, all right. Yeah, it's just same old ideas. Um, but uh, the Meridius thing, I'm just I don't find that interesting, really. A future Eddie Brock, who's the villain. I don't find that interesting, but I guess we'll dive into that when we get into the Venom book. So, yeah, if you're still here and you've made it through this, let me know what you think. Have you read these issues yourself? Because if you have a different opinion to me, I'd love to hear it down below. For sure um like like i said i'm not negative on this book i have criticisms but i ultimately enjoyed these two issues i'm like hey that's fine i don't know if i'll be i'm not excited to go read the venom book i'll say that and i'm not going to read any more thor issues but just for this little two-part story team up thing I'm like yeah all right it's it's fine it, you know i guess it it was uh, enough to it helped me create content i guess um but it wasn't like you know it didn't piss me off or anything i was just like yeah i'm, I'm critical but overall fun time and and i would say if you're a venom fan though probably add these to your collection because if you're trying to follow everything that's happening in the current book these two issues seem to be at least connected to that maybe not vital because nothing happens in here that changes the venom book meridius doesn't get the hammer because i was like oh if he gets the hammer and leaves then that that sets up something in the venom book that would be cool but then they destroy the hammer and, and send it down to donald blake so i'm like oh so this all helped the thor book but it didn't really help the venom book that also sounds like Donny Cates to me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so those are my opinions. Let me know what yours are down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll have more Venom vlog stuff for you very soon, um, including Venom stories, uh, you know, comic book stuff, but also more origin stories from the Spider-Verse. I'll do, try to do more of those in the coming weeks for sure. So thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.